Hi, and welcome to our brand new series called Problem Design Solution, where we're going to be looking at different problems with inside of Power BI, walking you through a possible design, and then showing you an end completed solution of how you could solve each problem. In this first video, we're going to be looking at a problem having to do with tooltips. And so if you've worked with tooltips inside of Power BI Visuals, you know they look very similar to the screenshot you see on the right hand side, where you can hover above something like a column chart here. And within that tooltip that appears, it allows you to see some additional information about the selection or about the item that you're hovering above. Now, there are some limitations that we're going to take a look at here in a few moments having to do with tooltips. One is that they can only display measure values. So you'll notice here that it does show you the category that's part of the chart. But if you want to add anything additional, say, for example, you want to add your own additional tooltips, then they do need to be brought in as measures. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in a few moments. They can be either implicit or explicit measures, meaning explicit measures are calculations that you create on your own. But if you just decide to drag in an implicit measure, you'll notice that Power BI automatically aggregates the value using either the first, last, count, or count distinct functions with inside of DAX. So let's go ahead and walk you through how this, what this problem really is, how it uh, works, and then we'll go move on after that to show you how the solution, or what possible solutions you can use to solve this problem. All right, so you likely have worked with column charts like this before, and you might have noticed when you select these column charts, you have in the field well on the right-hand side where you can drop in different items in the axis, the, le the legend section, the value section, color saturation, and then the last item here that we're focused on is called tooltips. Now again, tooltips are basically the capability where you can hover above a column like this in a column chart, and it display the values that you have in the chart. So what you're seeing here is the the axes for uh, category, and you're also seeing the stock amounts. So stock amount being the value that's really controlling the height of the column chart. And you can also bring in other items that maybe you don't necessarily want to display on the chart, but you do want to display in the tooltip. So say, for example, I want to see the quantity. So the stock quantity, I can drag in the stock value right here underneath the tooltip section. And as soon as I do that, you'll notice that there's now a new value there, even though it's not displayed on the chart, you'll notice there that the stock is showing um, in the tooltip section. That stock is just sim simply from what I dragged in from my field list here. So that you have the ability to add in new fields into the tooltip area. Now what I'd really like to do is I'd like to add in the subcategory into the tooltip section. So I'm looking at the category right now, I'm looking at electronics, but I want to see all of the subcategories that exist below that category. So my initial thought is, all right, well, I'll simply come over here to the category section, drag and drop category underneath the tooltip section right here, like we did stock a few moments ago. And then when I go to hover over here and see, you'll notice that it doesn't list all of the categories. It actually just shows the first one in the list. And so it's only showing cell phones here. It's only showing boys here for clothing. And it's only showing cats for my pet items. So this is actually kind of a, a category and subcategory within some kind of a department store. So the problem is that whenever you work with this tooltip area, by default, it's going to want to aggregate it in some way. And you can choose whether or not you want to use this first type of aggregate like it is right now, where it's doing a first of the subcategory, or you can actually change it by coming over to the field well here and hitting the down arrow next to first subcategory. And you can switch it to last, count distinct, or count. So if I choose something like count, this will give me a count of all of the subcategories I have. So it's telling me I have a count of seven which is helpful, but it's not really completely what I'm looking for. What I'd like to see is a list of the names of the subcategories that exist underneath this category. So underneath electronics, I want to see TVs and video games and movies and things like that. I want to see each of those listed here in something like a comma separated list. And so that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to walk you through the, the design of the solution for this, and then walk, we'll walk you through also how to implement that solution here as well. So let's go ahead and take a look back at the slides for a few moments to talk through the possible designs for this solution. All right, so let's take a look at the possible designs to the solution to this problem. It all has to do with writing a DAX formula and a DAX calculation inside of the Power BI desktop. DAX, if you're not really familiar with DAX, that stands for the Data Analysis Expression Language. And this calculation is a little complex just from the fact that we're using three formulas here, or three, func three functions together but it's really a short one. So we can talk through this one and it should make sense pretty easy. And then we'll talk about the second design of the solution and I'll show you how that one actually adds some more complexity to it. All right, so the first one that you'll see here is using three major functions, the concatenate, the calculate, and the values function. 
Now, if you're not really familiar with the calculate function, this function is something that you'll use quite frequently that whenever you have something that's really of any complexity. When you start to try and solve more complex problems, you're likely using this calculate function to be able to do that. Calculate functions basically evaluate an expression, which is oftentimes aggregates, not always, in this case it's actually not an aggregate, but it allows you to take an aggregate values up within, a, within, the, within the context of a filter. So say, for example, you're looking at sales within inside of your organization, and you only want to see the sales that occurred in the United States. Well, you could use a calculate function to filter down the sales that are returned back to only show the U.S. sales. That's one way that you can use a calculate function. In fact, that's one of the more simple ways you can use the calculate function to do a simple filter and return back the sales. So you're going to tell it to you want to return back the sum of the sales, but only when it refers to the U.S. sales. So you can apply a filter with inside the calculate function. Here, we're doing things a little bit differently. Rather than using a typical aggregate, we're actually using a function called concatenate x. And what the concatenate x function allows you to do is take values across a list of values in a table and concatenate them together. Okay, so think about it like this. If you use a regular concatenate, that allows you to concatenate things within a certain row. If you want to concatenate things across an entire table, you're using something like a concatenate x function. And what the concatenate x function allows you to do is pass in some kind of delimiter between each of the values that you want to concatenate. So in this case, we want to get a comma separated list of all of the subcategories. So we use the concatenate x function along with a comma and a space to inject that in between as a delimiter between each of our subcategories. The last thing that you'll see here is the values function. The values function is used to return back only a distinct list of values in our filter context. So think about it like this. If we had multiple subcategories that were the exact same value, we don't want to list the same value more than once in our comma separated list. We actually only want a distinct list of values in our concatenate x function. So we're going to use the values function to make sure that we only see a distinct list of values here. So this is one option. This first option allows you to create a concatenated list. The second option, the second design that we're going to talk about is a little bit more complex. But the complexity is really for good reason. Because here's the problem that you could run into with the first solution. The first solution is great. It's going to give me a comma separated list of all of my subcategories. But what if I have 25 subcategories? Am I really going to list all 25 subcategories? Probably not, because it's going to really overwhelm the users. It's going to be too much to look at in the tooltip. And so that's why there's the second solution that, to give credit, this actually come, came from an individual called Dustin Ryan, who works for Microsoft. You can find his blog at sqldusty.com. And he gave this really interesting tip to be able to really solve that problem of too many values in your list of your tooltip. And basically what he's suggesting doing here is creating a variable. That's what you see the VAR stands for here. That's creating a variable called subcategories count. And the variable there is identified as a distinct count of all the subcategories, okay? Now there's really not a necessarily, you don't necessarily have to use the variable here. It just makes it a little cleaner as you start to work throughout this calculation. So what we do here with the calculation, we create a variable, we fill that variable called subcategory count, or subcategories count, and we pass in a distinct list, a distinct count of all the subcategories. Then in our calculation, we do, and we use an if statement, and we say if that count is greater than three, then we actually only want to return back the top three. And you see a top n here that shows it only wants to return back the top three subcategories, and then we'll say and more whenever there's more than three, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through this here in a demonstration here in a few moments, but that and more is anytime we have more than three values, it's gonna list that instead of trying to list out all the values. Now, if that's not true, remember this is within the context of an if statement, if it's not greater than or equal to three, then it's just going to list the values as a comma separated list, which is actually identical to what you saw in the top design solution. All right, so let's go ahead and show you these two different designs to the solution. And then we'll come back to the slides for just a few moments to talk to talk about what do we do next. All right, so let's walk through to the two different designs for the solution we're trying to create. The first one is going to be a fairly simple calculation. It is a measure, and so if we want to create a new measure, we're going to come over here to the field list. You can also do this by going underneath the modeling ribbon here, and you can click new measure here, or you can right click on the stock table and select new measure here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new calculation. This calculation is going to be fairly simple, but what we want to do is go ahead and name it subcategories because it's going to be a list of all the subcategories that we want to show in the tooltip. Now, we showed what the calculation was earlier, but just to walk you through it once more, we are going to be using the calculate function that's going to be setting the context for the concatenate function we're trying to use. 
And you can see here the expression I mentioned in the slides earlier that's usually a form of an aggregate. In this case, we're actually going to be using the concatenate x function here to be able to iterate over our table and concatenate multiple values in our table. Then we're also going to be using the values function. That values function gets us back a distinct list of values from the stock table. And a specific column that we're going to be using is going to be the subcategory column. So we'll select subcategory here. We'll go ahead and put a parenthesis around that to return back the distinct list of values. And then to wrap up our concatenate function here, we're going to tell it that we want to concatenate the stock subcategory. And then the delimiter that we're going to be using is a comma separator. So I'll select a comma here, close parentheses twice, once to close out the concatenate x function, and once to close out the calculate function. Now, once we have that, we can go ahead and hit return or enter here. And that's going to add a new measure here called subcategories. And we can now add that to our tooltip inside of this column chart. And we should be able to hover above now and see a comma separated list of all of our subcategories. In this case, we have seven here, we have five here, and we have a total of two in our final one, dogs and cats. Now, I mentioned the problem earlier, like uh, you see in this one, that's one that has seven subcategories. It begins to be a little bit too much. Imagine if I actually had 25 subcategories here. So the solution, the second solution, or the second design to the solution, is to kind of create a more dynamic field here and make it so that rather than seeing all of the subcategories, to only see three of them, at least three, and then if there are more, actually say and more. So what we're going to do, we're going to keep this one here so you can have that as reference. We'll go ahead and add in another calculation. So I'll right click on stock, go ahead and click new measure here again. And this one, we're going to call this one, just so we have it something different, I'll call this one subcategories and more. Okay, so it's clear this one's a little bit different than the previous one. Now what we're going to be doing in this case is we're actually, by the way, you can hit shift and enter if you want to get some more real estate here. I'm going to hit shift and enter because what I want to do is I want to create a variable. And this variable that we're going to create is going to be called subcategories count. And we're going to set that count equal to the distinct count. So we're going to get a distinct count of the subcategories. Now, it is going to do this within the context of our report. It's a distinct count, but it's a distinct count of electronics, or a distinct count of clothing, or a distinct count of pets. We're going to be able to get that within here just based on the way that we bring in this value. So we're going to tell, we want a distinct count of subcategories within the categories that we have. And that'll just naturally happen as the report is built. Then we're going to tell it that we want to return, that's a variable that we created, remember, and then we're going to tell it that we want to return, I hit enter a little bit too soon, where we want to return with an if statement. So we'll say if, and by the way, I'm missing a close parentheses up here. Let me close print that. We're going to say if the subcategory count, that's our variable that we just created. Okay, so you'll see it actually recognizes the variable here. If our subcategory count is greater than or equal to, so greater than or equal to three, that's our restriction there. We're telling it no more than that. And then after that, you're gonna have to say and more. But if it's greater than three, then we want to do our calculate. This will be very similar to what we had in our previous example. So we'll say calculate, and that should be a comma right here. There we go. We're gonna say calculate, and we wanna do our concatenate x function with the top n function as well. Now what the top n function is doing here is pretty self-explanatory. It's telling us that we want to bring back the top three values here. So inside that uh, open parenthesis here, we're gonna say three. And then we're going to also use our values function because, we, again, we want to make sure we're getting a distinct list of values here. So we're going to tell it stock and subcategory. There we go. All right. Now, we're going to do a couple close parentheses here. We want to close out the values function, close out the top end function. And then we'll want to also want to close out our concatenate function, which, again, we're going to concatenate using the stock subcategory. And then our delimiter here that we want to concatenate with is a comma and a space. Now, remember, we also want, however, to bring back and concatenate in that and more whenever we do have more than three. So we'll do a uh, ampersand here to concatenate, okay? And then we'll also have in there uh, the and more, dot, dot, dot. So that gives you an indication here that there's more than the three that we have seen here in our list. All right, then to wrap this up, we're going to do our false part of the if statement. So you'll notice here that it pops open. This is our if statement. We're now working on the false part of our if statement. Here we're basically going to do the same thing that we did in our original calculation, which was a calculate on the concatenate x. And we're going to tell it that we wanted to get a distinct list of values. Okay. 
and we want to base that off of the subcategory again okay and then we want to also bring back after we do a close parenthesis there we want to bring back the subcategory concatenated with a comma space okay all right so i'll do two close parentheses there i'm gonna do one more here also to close out our full statement and then we'll hit enter all right so we now have that calculation built it's a little bit lengthy of a calculation but just to review we're creating a variable we're counting all the subcategories then we're using that to determine if there's greater than or equal to three then we want to say and concatenate and more to this so if there's more than three then we want to add that and more text to the tooltip if there's if that's not true if there's not more than three then we're going to do our regular concatenated value that we had earlier all right so we'll go ahead now with that calculation created we'll add that to our tooltip down here in the bottom and let's notice the difference now so you can notice the difference here is it looks like after it does the original the first three it then concatenates in and more at the very end of that set of values okay just to make sure it's very clear on the difference here i'm going to go ahead and remove the original one and here you can see it very clearly tv DV, tv dvd and blu-ray players home audio and theater and more same down here women's men's boys and more and then pets because it's only two just says dogs cats so that's kind of the solution there you see the final solution is to add that to your tooltip and we're actually going to talk a little bit more about that in the slide deck but it's actually already you've already seen the solution here you just drop it into the tooltip area to finalize that solution you can kind of decide whether you like the one that lists them all or the one that gives you the top three and then and more being the last part okay let's return back to the slides and wrap it up all right so the solution is in this example was pretty simple once we did the design we created the two calculations we dropped this into our tooltip and you saw the results of our design basically we just put the tooltip or the calculated measure in our tooltip area and we were able to see it very clearly there so a quick review of what we talked about in this example the problem that we were trying to solve was showing and really overcoming some of the problems with the tooltip and some of the problems that it has by default so we showed that problem we showed the tooltip problem and what how it reacts by default we then created two different solutions two different designs for the solution we walked through those two different dax calculations how to overcome that problem and then finally we showed the solution was to add a new calculated measure to the tooltip area after we created those two formulas hope you guys enjoyed this one i do want to remind you guys that we do have lots of power bi training over at pragmaticworks.com if you log in to our website and you view a course or courses that you like you can use the promo code power bi pds for problem design solution to get 10% off on any training solution that we have on our course, any on-demand training solution, I should say. So please take a look. I'm sure you'll find any, many of these courses you will really be interested in, and many of them are DAX-related. If you happen to like this DAX solution, you'll actually find things like this inside the courses that we offer. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you in our next example.